Hi, I'm Shelly Kurth, and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Nicola Sisi. Today, we will be talking to you about how to stay sane in these times of unprecedented parenting. Our background together includes over 30 years of teaching and leading schools, and right now we are actually homeschool or maybe summer school parents right along with most of you. Um, our goals in, these, in this series is to provide you with tips and tricks and tools to keep your learner thriving and to keep you sane. And as always, we'll post some tools and tips in the comments section, but you can also find them on our website at thriveps.org. And specifically this week, we're going to talk about exploring the world of work and uh, your child's future a little bit more in depth. Now with quarantine for our older students, you know, internships, volunteer work, that's been put on pause a little bit, but that doesn't mean that the dreaming about what the future might hold and the engagement that comes from thinking about the future has to stop. And while that work definitely ramps up in 11th grade, there's a lot that you can do with your child at home, both in the summer or during the school year, to explore what careers and career pathways, college pathways might work for them and uh, really interest them. So that is what today's show will be all about. And Shelly's here to kick us off. Thanks. It is never too early or too late to talk about the future and future possibilities. So uncovering those options can start when your kids are really little. Just talking about your career, your job, other family members' jobs, neighbors' jobs, um, things that are happening in the community, and linking those to jobs and careers. Um, as they grow older, you can start researching those a little more and asking questions. Um, what did it take to get into that job? What does a day look like um, when you're in that job? But even as little kids, talking about your job, talking about other jobs in the families and to other family members really will start uncovering options and possibilities. Take note of your child's interests and call them out. Their strengths, the things that they seem to love and the things that they do re really well. Let your child know that you notice it and then when it feels natural and right, link that to a career. Um, I had a kiddo who loved to take things apart and put it back together and I always talked about what a great little engineer he was because I could see, I wanted to link his love of taking things apart and building back to a profession. So when you have a chance to do that and can find natural ways to add that in, that's another great thing to do all through life. And one of my favorite things to talk to parents about is letting your kiddos dream. Um, sometimes I think that we're really tempted to roll our eyes at some of the future possibilities our kids come up with. My daughter has said more than once that she wants to be a professional YouTuber when she grows up. Um, and boy, I just want to say, oh, don't be crazy. But then when I stop myself and really think about it, I realize that a lot of the jobs that our kids will have don't even exist yet. Certainly when I was a child, there were not professional YouTubers. So instead of saying no and shaking my head, say yes and let them dream. You can dig into that a little more as they grow older about what it really takes or about how many people make it. But right now, what a great way to start dreaming. Um, and let them dream, keep that open mind. There are opportunities to dream and plan about the future at so many stages of life and of education. I have teenagers, but Nicole has little guys. Nicole, what are you doing at home? I uh, definitely am trying to just think about how do we go beyond firefighter and astronaut? Uh, those are the big ones in, in my house right now. Uh, and isn't that so true for kids, right? They have a very limited idea of careers and it's usually the same ones that that we hear over and over again i want to be an astronaut and while i definitely want my kiddo to aim for the stars if you will uh let me talk to you about some ways to introduce other careers just to expand their horizon we know that research suggests that the more you talk about varied careers the more you talk about potential options the more likely it is that your child will aim high and embrace careers that maybe uh, 
have not been talked about in other households. So for example, uh, talking about opportunities in STEM fields and technology fields, engineering fields, makes your child that much more likely to embrace a career option uh, along those lines. And so as Shelly mentioned, say yes to things, explore new things. You can do that by creating a new reading list. And when you look for online or hard copy books, again, in previous sessions, we talked about the online library app that you can access. Um, but even in your own library at home, think about like which jobs touch on careers and try to bring those careers to life and talk about like, well, this is what this job does. So keep an eye out as you choose your nighttime reading, various careers that you could chat about. Um, there are also books that focus entirely on different careers. I think another thing to uncover is just to make that link for children of how skills link to jobs. And Shelly mentioned this a minute ago about engineering and taking things apart. Uh, my son and I talk about that. He is really into like exploring what snails do. And um, so he watches them and we talk about the scientific process or what scientists do of studying things. We've talked about what veterinarians do. Uh, we also talked about how the snails sometimes eat things in our gardens and talked about like different farming fields um, and careers related to that. So use those opportunities just to make those links. These don't need to be formal lessons. You don't need to have a flow chart or a chalkboard, uh, but just bring them up. And then also create some opportunity for your child to speak to other family members. You know, what are family and friends doing? What are their careers like? You can combine that with writing a letter or an email to them and exploring that and creating that correspondence or just hopping on a phone call or a, uh, a video conference call to just say like, Hey, Uncle Bill, you know, what's your job like and what do you do? What do you like about it? What do other people in your company do? But just make that a regular habit of conversation because, again, the research is super clear. The more you talk about it, the bigger your kid dreams, the more likely they are to find success. And that starts really early. But Shelly, talk to us about what that looks like in high school. Yeah, well, high school is the time when this work really ramps up and it becomes more urgent and boy, now that schools are distance learning, that's really putting the ball in the parent court for some of this. Your help is even more important, uh, especially if your child is a junior or senior in high school. Um, I wanna say, I can't stress enough, that there are many, many options and your child will land in, a, in, in the right place for them. So um, I think it becomes really stressful. I have to get into this college or I have to get into this program. Um, just you know, take a, a breath and recognize it's not just about you and it's, it's about them and what they need and what they're doing. And they'll have to put in a lot of work starting in high school but you get to be the cheerleader, the encourager, and the urger. Um, so as we embrace this planning stage, uh, there are a couple things that you can do to really help your child, but also maybe help the school help your child in this time of distance learning. The first thing is to check in on coursework. This can happen early on, freshman year of high school. Hopefully it's your child, but it could be you and your child making an appointment with the counselor or teacher and looking at their, their plan for coursework and making sure that those courses give them opportunities at the end um, to go to college. Whether or not they choose, they're thinking that's what they're going to do as a freshman, you want to make sure that if they change their mind, they have that opportunity. So look in on that coursework and talk about it with a counselor. The second thing you can do is encourage taking free online class that might have something to do with one of their interests. A lot of parents have asked me recently, like, wow, the school day is so much shorter when it's homeschool. What do I do with my child? Well, this is one of those options. Um, we found uh, about 2,500 free courses on a website called edX. And there's all amazing different opportunities. Uh, I don't, you know, maybe your maybe your kid will embrace that, or maybe they won't. But it's a great to start encouraging it, or even to find a couple that might be of interest. It fills some time, and it also, again, uncovers possibilities. Maybe take an aptitude test or like a, a career passion test um, that, that'll give you some ideas of some careers. There are a few free ones. Um, there's others that are really low cost. I found uh, one, two, three career test. Uh, there, the Princeton Review Career Quiz is another one and they're free. 
Um, and it's fun if you do it alongside your side your child. You could do some even talking about it. It really is inspiring to talk about the kinds of things that um, and careers that those uh, quizzes will point you to. And encourage your kid to start a portfolio of their great work. Buy a binder or sheet protectors. Build a resume. Those are things you can help edit it. Again, if you have some free time and here you are, you're now the cheerleader and the encourager, these are little things that you can do that might just turn something on in your child's brain to help them motivate. You know, COVID has really impacted a lot of the ways that we make connection through uh, job shadows, through um, jobs even, uh, volunteer work, internships. So we have to lean in and try to give that exposure to our kids as much as possible in other ways. Nicole, what are some more specific things that happen in 11th and 12th grade? Yeah, I mean, once you have an idea, right? Once your child has an idea of what they uh, want to do with their future, part of the exploration is talking about college and getting uh, tangibly prepared for college. And I want to talk to you about five different things that should be happening in 11th and 12th grade. They include creating a calendar, doing some research, visiting some schools virtually or in person, organizing your materials, and then really brainstorming your essay ideas. So let's talk about the first one, a calendar. All good planning starts by figuring out when you need to do what. Uh, there are placement tests. There are um, different entrance deadlines, application deadlines, scholarship deadlines. You will need to work with your child or encourage your child to create a calendar of important deadlines. And uh, as a starting place, we actually recommend California College Pathways. They've got a really strong, a curated list of deadlines that you can start with. It doesn't include everything that's out there, but start with those dates and then think about, are there specific scholarships or are there some specific schools that you have in mind that you wanna add some dates in for? So build that calendar out. The second thing is then doing some research. Now, uh, maybe you've thought about the school that you wanna attend for a really long time time. Maybe your child has exactly the ideas in mind of whether they want to be a rural or an urban area, whether they want small class sizes or big class sizes, whether there are specific sports they're interested in. Uh, if they have answers to many of these questions, College Board has a great uh, quiz and search function that you can go through and answer those questions and it will give you a list of schools. You can then also run that list against another app called CapEx. Um, and that will basically tell you like, okay, given this list that you have, here's some schools that are might be right for you. And here's what it takes to get in them. You know, what are your chances for getting into these schools? But if your child is anything like I was when I was in high school, I wasn't sure. So UniGo is another great website. And again, we'll have links for you in the comments, but UniGo kind of gives you a personality test that will at the end recommend some different schools for you based on a series of questions that it had asked you. So again, that's our step number two, right? Researching some schools that are out there. Your next step is visiting schools. Now, no, you might think, Nicole, you've lost your mind. I can't visit schools, COVID, can't travel, or I don't want to travel. But guess what? This current time has forced all colleges essentially to create really great and robust online search options. So more than ever, you can take virtual tours. You can meet with groups of students online. And it's basically sped up searching for colleges for many students because you get a personal connection and a touch and without traveling across the country. So save some money, put it in the college savings fund um, and do some virtual visits. Now, number four, it's really important to be organized and to have a system to organize either your digital materials or your hard copy materials. Because as soon as you start thinking about colleges, signing up for tours, they will send you stuff and they will send you a lot of stuff. So get prepared, create some folders, uh, create some digital bins, whatever might work so that your child can keep all that information in a way that is organized. And step number five, start thinking about college essays and how to tell your story. You know, storytelling is such a art 
that sometimes it takes some brainstorming and thinking about how to tell your story most powerfully. So start thinking about that with your child as you create your plans. And most of all, have fun, build connections, do this in a way that creates joy, that awakens curiosity, and uh, don't be too hard on yourself. It is hard to do all these things at home. It is hard to be living through a pandemic, but you've got this and we're here for you. Um, what are your final words of encouragement, Shelley, for our viewers out there? You said have fun. And I'll say as a mom who's just gone through this, it's not always fun. But as soon as I put the ball in, in my daughter's court and realized that this is her journey and that my job was to support her in that journey, it got a lot more fun. So as we went through, uh, California has a great place, the California Career Zone that talks about all different kinds of careers um, student for, for, for students. It's at that le student level. Um, and also ONET is another one that is really helpful. It started to be fun when I realized this wasn't me planning my life. This was her planning her life. And we started to have a lot more fun when I released the pressure on me and just decided I was just going to be her biggest cheerleader. So enjoy watching your kids, um, take flight and don't forget that this starts happening when they're little by just talking about the world around them. Enjoy, have fun, and don't forget, if you want to see some more, go to our playbook at thriveps.org. Take care. Be well.